Why are they so smart? Can they really open fridges? Make movies? Do they really talk to each other? And how could they end up in a toilet? We're going to find out in this episode of National Geographic Kids Awesome Animals. Listen carefully and you will hear rats living everywhere. It's the sound of their exploration, communication, and domination. They're nimble, quick, and smarter than we realize. Maybe too smart. We're gonna test the rats to see just how smart they really are. Across the planet, rats can be found pretty much everywhere. In downtown Washington, D.C., in a trendy section of town, the rats have moved in. When people leave out their trash, there they are. For them, it's like an all-you-can-eat buffet. Look! Oh, shoot! I am scared to death of rats. Vivian Saab, a nurse from New York, was excited to move into her Washington apartment. Then, she met the neighbors. Look, 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 look at go in the hole! This neighborhood is prime real estate for rats. It has everything they need. Food, water, and shelter. That's heaven back there! The, from a rat's point of view, that garbage back there, they done struck gold. There's nothing, <laughs> Mexican food, soul food, caviar. Thousands of years of evolving with humans have made rats feel comfortable living not just near us, but with us. A rat can break into a house in many clever ways. Burrowing from below, or leaping from above. Rats are acrobatic jumpers with an impressive high wire act. Why are rats such good jumpers? Super strong muscles cover their long hind legs. Together, this gives them enough spring-loaded power to jump five times their body length. That's quite a long jump. And a handy skill for escaping predators. Jumping requires good balance. Rats balance not with their paws, not with their legs, but with their tail. It's nearly as long as the rat itself and full of flexible tendons. The tail acts like a counterweight. The rat's body leans one way, its tail leans the other. So the rat stays on the cable. Now look what happens when someone twists the cable. The rat doesn't miss a beat. The tail now acts like an extra hand, so the rat can hold tight. And that's not all a rat's tail can do. It also keeps the rat cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Specialized blood vessels regulate blood flow in the tail. When they fill up, they release heat and cool down the rat. When they constrict, they trap heat and keep the rat warm. It's one reason rats feel at home in so many climates. That is, when they're not feeling at home in your house.
people try to stop them. They set out traps, plug up holes, but the rats still find a way in. That's because rats plan ahead. When they look for food, they also learn the layout. Hiding places, entrances, and exits. Block up one hole, and the rat will find another way. How do rats know how to do this? What's going on inside their heads? This is what a rat might see while exploring your kitchen. First, it surveys the territory, making a movie along the way. If it finds something delicious, yum! It will pause and replay the scene that led up to the reward. But that's not the whole story. The rat seems to replay the memory in reverse. So it might look more like this. Thinking in reverse might sound strange, but it's actually a great way to learn something quickly by retracing its steps in its head. Watch how a rat does this to find a chocolate chip cookie. Step one, check out the local landmarks. Step two, Make a mental map of every object's location. On the path, the rat sees the rubber rat, the hula girl, the car, the duck, and, aha, a cookie. Now, the rat is probably thinking, how did I get here? How can I get back to this spot that's so delicious? It replays the footage. The strongest memory is the cookie, then the duck, the car, the hula girl, and the rubber rat. The next time, the rat finds the cookie a little more quickly. After a few tries, it's a no-brainer. That's a pretty smart animal. In a maze, or in the sewers, rats love to explore. This can lead them to some very strange places. Roommates, Marlene and Jessica, experienced this firsthand. So it was late one fall evening, cold and rainy, and I was just uh, watching some TV, thinking about getting ready to go to bed. I heard a noise. So I went to the bathroom to see what was going on. Got the shock of my life. There was a rat in the toilet trying to jump out. Marlene screamed and Jessica rushed to the bathroom. They were just sort of, they were, like I am now, there's nothing you can say. You just look at them going, okay, now what? <laughs> so we went out to the kitchen and got a pair of oven mitts and some tongs and a wooden spoon and carefully tonged him out of the toilet into a old box full of uh, paper towels. You don't, there, there are things you expect to see in a toilet, and um, fauna is not one of them. <laughs> Scary? Yes. Surprising? No. A rat in the toilet is not that uncommon. DC Rodent Control received four complaints last year, and those are just the people who are willing to admit it. <laughs> 
Okay, Miss Sudan, you're gonna have to get out of the house and you're gonna have to go seek medical attention, okay? She was bit on the butt. Crawling through three floors of sewer pipes is all in a night's work for a rat. First, it finds an open sewer grate and goes down into the main tunnel. From there, sewer pipes lead up to houses and apartments and kitchens. A rat might decide it's time to make a house call. Only one thing is in its way, a maze of toilet pipes. We've set up a sample maze so you can see for yourself. Underwater, the first mistake can be its last. At a turn, the rat finds a pocket of air, just enough to help it push on and up to the surface. How does it collapse its body like that? Watch this rat try to squeeze through the tiny hole. If it can get its head through, the rest is a cinch. When the rat squeezes through the hole, the pressure pushes on its ribs. But the ribs are hinged at the spine, so they easily collapse. Curiosity gets the rat to the pipes. Flexibility gets it through the pipes. And as for the water, what if someone flushes? It turns out they're expert swimmers. Rats paddle with their back legs. Steer with their front feet. And use that multi-talented tail as a rudder. And they're talented divers. They can hold their breath underwater for up to three minutes. All these water skills come in handy in the sewers, and they've also helped rats spread to nearly every corner of the planet. In this Washington DC neighborhood, the residents are fed up. It's time to call in the professionals. Tolando Taylor and Ronnie Harrington work for DC Rodent Control. But the main purpose of our job is to control them to an environmentally comfortable level where you won't see as many. Like rat enforcers worldwide, this team is doing everything it can just to keep the rodents in check. The weapon of choice is poison but it usually only works on the rookies. The more experienced rats know how to survive a deadly snack attack, and they can build up resistance to small amounts of poison. They'll also test any new foods with just a small bite. If it makes them feel sick, they'll learn to steer clear. Like we said, rats are smart, but humans are sometimes smarter. The pest control brings in a new weapon, a delayed poison. It won't take effect for about a week, just long enough for the rats to make a fatal mistake. Exciting for the rat patrol, not so much for the rats. And they're sure to tell their friends about it. Here's how it works. Rat number one goes out to sample a few dishes. Which is the tastiest? Dog food? Maybe. Cheese? Nah. Peanut butter? Getting warmer. More cookies! 
the rat returns to his friend and shares the good news. Rat number two gets a whiff of his friend's breath and smells chocolate chips. Now, see what happens. Rat number two doesn't even try the other foods. It heads straight to the cookie. It knows the cookie is safe because rat number one already tested it. Rats not only give food reviews, they speak in a secret language. It's called ultrasound, high-pitched squeaks that are beyond human hearing. But that's not stopping scientists from figuring out what they're saying. Rats use ultrasound to express their emotions, like fear, distress, and happiness. It's the rat version of Twitter. In just one day, a rat can transmit tens of thousands of messages. Rats evolved ultrasound communications over the last 12 million years as an early warning system to avoid predators. People can only hear up to a maximum frequency of 20 kilohertz. Sounds like this. But rats can talk to each other in squeaks that range from 20 to 100 kilohertz, which sounds something like this. Luckily, we've got machines to help us eavesdrop on the rat chatter. This ultrasound detector will pick up the signal. Our test rat, Arthur, hangs out on the table. His friends Benji and Frankie are in their cages on the other side of the lab. First, a scientist startles Arthur. He runs into the tube to hide and warns his friends. Benji and Frankie get the message loud and clear, so they run and hide. This is why it's hard to trap more than one rat. If one gets caught, it's sure to tell the others. We're starting to understand how rats think, but rats figured out how we think a long time ago, and they use it to their advantage. Dan Gutstein once had a strange encounter with one of these curious rodents. Went home to my apartment, got my mail. There in the middle of my kitchen is a rat sitting there with a lamb chop bone. Soon, Dan realized he and the rat were staring each other down. I looked at him, he looked at the bone, he looked at me. He looked at the trash can again, he looked at me. We looked at each other, we looked away. We looked at each other. Dan was surprised. The rat wasn't afraid of him at all. But scientists say this makes a lot of sense. Rats have evolved to recognize our behavior, even our moods. They can sense whether or not they're in danger. And this rat wasn't scared of Dan at all. He was saying to me, I'm in your apartment, man. What are you gonna do about that, right? I have your lamb chop bone. Knowing when to keep eating and when to start running helps rats survive. It gives the rat the advantage of finishing its meal in its own good time by grabbing as many snacks as it can. In extreme cases, a rat will take over the whole house. Daniel Garcia Pedrosa found this out the hard way. I was asleep, and all of a sudden I heard a noise. It was a loud noise coming from the kitchen. Something was wrong. this huge rat sitting on the counter. For three days, he lived in a house divided. He got one half, and the other half went to the rat. 
You know, we're really living in, in fear constantly of this rat. I decided it was time to confront it. I went in alone, tiptoeing into the kitchen. My, my heart was pounding. Uh, I'm sure I was sweating and it was pitch black. I was being very quiet and all of a sudden, I saw the refrigerator light turn on. It was the rat had opened the fridge. How could a rat open the fridge? Bits of food along the refrigerator door's rubber seal is like a giant billboard for rats. Eat here! Once the fridge is discovered, the movie in the rat's head will guide it back here again and again. But to get in, the rat has to do a little chomping. And it's got the right tools for the job. Four razor-sharp incisors. Good for gnawing, ripping, and pulling. Rat teeth are constantly growing, about a half an inch each month. So the rat has to gnaw to keep its teeth short. Otherwise, in just a couple of years, its teeth would grow into a spiral that's one foot long. The rat is truly a gnawing machine. In the science lab, rats take on the refrigerator challenge. Will one be able to pry open the door? Peanut butter is placed on the seal to inspire a break-in. At least that's the plan. Is the rat strong enough? Tough enough? Smart enough? All of the above. Pretty soon, they'll be making their own sandwiches. Rats aren't going anywhere. They know exactly how to use us for food. If the rats do hang around, I, I'm, I'm leaving. I, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to live like this. Well, at the time, it seemed that the rat had won. But in the long run, it allowed me to you know, move on and buy my own home. And um, we're, I think we're all happier now. We can only keep them at an arm's length. To do that, we'll have to be better planners, communicators, problem solvers, mind readers. We'll have to be, well, like a rat.